Welcome to the presentation of Sunrise to Sunset, our paper in which we analyze the end-to-end -end life cycle and effectiveness of large-scale fishing attacks. My name is Adam Ost, and this is joint work together with my co-authors at Arizona State University, as well as PayPal and Google. Fishing is a significant threat against the online ecosystem. Despite advancements and mitigations against malicious websites, over the past several years, pressure from phishing attacks has been increasing, even as web-based malware sites decline, as shown in this figure from Google Safe Browsing. Here's an example of a typical phishing website, which might be distributed at scale to a large set of victims. In this case, the website impersonates a webmail login, and it has the same look and feel as the legitimate one. However, we observe that the domain in this case is quite different. That gives away that it's a phishing attack. As part of our background research into modern phishing attacks, we inspected a large sample of live phishing websites. Looking at the source code, we found that these websites often embed JavaScript tracking code or images that are hosted on external servers. For example, on the phishing website from the previous slide, we observed that three of the requests actually go to the server of the organization that's being impersonated. If we are able to collect these web events, we might be able to track the activity of victims visiting various phishing websites. However, to obtain this data, one needs to be an organization that's actually targeted and impersonated by fishers. We collaborated with one such organization and built out a framework that could be used for this analysis. Web traffic data corresponding to potential victims is of course sensitive. So we made sure that all the data that we used in this research was fully anonymized. And we discussed this in more detail in the paper. Now, to build this analysis framework, we start with the database of anonymized web events obtained from one organization targeted by fishers. We then collect known phishing or suspicious URLs from other data sources. And continuously, we correlate these with domains found in the anonymized web events. This allows us to map out traffic from potential victims, crawlers, and also attackers visiting those phishing websites. This also allows us to generate a timeline of the attack, as well as potential detections. And we'll go back to that in more detail later in this presentation. Now that we have this timeline, we can also take session identifiers from the web data and correlate it with the organization's fraud data. This enables loss calculations and the ability to secure any accounts that might have been affected by phishing. Simultaneously, we take email data into account from an email provider or phishing reports sent by users, we might be able to map the timing of spam and trends from users reporting these phishing websites. Now, let's build a timeline and look at how we can use these data sources to do so. The first step of a phishing attack is configuration of that website by the attacker. And data on this can be captured from the anonymized web events, for example, if an attacker visits the phishing websites for testing purposes. Next, attackers start targeting victims, for example, by beginning an email spam campaign. This data would be captured by the email data set from the framework. Once those emails start going out, victims may click on them and visit the phishing websites. This would then correspond to web events collected by the web event data source. Over the course of the coming hours and days, attackers may start monetizing or attempt to monetize uh, the stolen credentials and other data obtained from the phishing websites. There may be indications of this from the organization's fraud data. Once the attack is detected by the ecosystem, mitigations may be enacted, and eventually the attack will go offline, either as a result of security efforts or simply by the phishers' own choice. Both of these events may also be captured by the web event data source. Now I'd like to talk about our deployment of this framework and the resulting data set. We refer to this as the golden hour data set and the golden hour framework. We obtained the data from a large organization, currently one of the top 10 most fished organizations in the ecosystem, between October 2018 and September 2019. We found that our data set had web events corresponding to 39.1% of known phishing domains during this period, which means that we had good visibility into over one third of all known phishing attacks. 
Looking at the data set, we found a total of 15.6 potential victims who visited phishing websites or were referred from phishing websites, and 4.8 million of those were known to the organization. Based on the visibility figure, we can estimate that for this organization, a total of almost 40 million potential victims were targeted. If we look at successful phishing attacks based on the fraud data, we observe that there was a 7.6% phishing success rate with an estimated total of 1.2 million victims that were likely to have been successfully phished. Now, by aggregating all of the data captured by the Golden Hour framework, we are able to build an end-to-end -end timeline of phishing attacks. The center of the graph represents the time at which each respective phishing domain was marked as malicious by an anti-phishing system. However, if we rewind, we observe that 9 hours and 42 minutes before then was the average time when an attacker actually visited the phishing website for the purpose of testing and configuration. Shortly after then, the first phishing email would go out on average, and victims would start visiting the websites. Then, about 40 minutes before that detection is the point at which 50% of victims have already visited phishing websites. We observe that 90% of victims' visits don't happen until eight hours after the detection, which means that despite the detection and mitigation, there is still damage being done. Finally, based on the fraud data that was collected, an average of five days elapses before a fraudulent transaction happens, and an average of about seven days before corresponding credentials were found in a dump. Now, this framework allows us to do two things. The first thing is proactive detection. If we have indicators of potential phishing before the ecosystem detections come in, we can actually do something about it. Similarly, after the detection, we can improve reactive mitigations, such as browser-based mitigations. In our deployment, we also secured the affected user accounts such that whenever we knew that a known user visited a malicious website, their account would be protected so that the username and password, for example, would no longer be able to compromise that account. We can also use the Golden Hour dataset to better understand various mitigations and also to understand the nature of modern phishing attacks. The first thing we do is we estimate the effectiveness of browser-based detection. We do this by comparing the ratio of traffic from browsers that do have anti-phishing features with traffic from browsers that do not. And the browsers that do are those that show warnings if you try to visit a known phishing web page. This chart shows the relative attack effectiveness over time after the point that each attack is detected. And we observe that a 50% decrease in effectiveness occurs after about two hours. And just before the eight hour mark is when the effectiveness of the phishing attack drops to a minimum between 0 and 10%. However, we still observe that there's room for improvement here uh, because despite these mitigations, attackers are still able to compromise victims. We also tackle this problem from an empirical perspective in another paper presented at this conference. Looking at the number of phishing URLs reported compared to the potential victim traffic observed by the Golden Hour dataset, we observe that increases or decreases in phishing URLs are not necessarily correlated with increases or decreases in victim traffic. In this case, for example, in August, there was a surge in victim traffic, even though the URLs were at a fairly low level. This means that it's important to consider multiple variables when analyzing phishing, not just the number of URLs being reported. Based on the data set, we looked at the top 20 domains with the most potential victims. We observed that some of these domains had very long running phishing campaigns, some even up to almost nine months. In addition, these attacks had a variety of different types of URLs and domains ranging from compromised domains, free domains, and also domains directly registered by attackers. This means that the ecosystem should prioritize these large scale high impact attacks. In fact, the top 20 phishing campaigns, which we group based on domain name in this case, accounted for almost a quarter of all of the potential victims. And if we take the top 10% of top domains, that's almost 90% of all of the victims. This means that the ecosystem should prioritize these large scale, high impact phishing campaigns. But how else can we characterize this? 
In analyzing these campaigns, we gain an understanding of some of the techniques that sophisticated phishing websites use to bypass detection or mitigation. One technique is human verification. In this case, the victim would be presented with a simple CAPTCHA, and this might prevent an anti-phishing system from classifying the attack as malicious. We also observed that phishing attacks carry out extensive identity theft. Beyond just usernames and passwords, things such as credit cards, addresses, phone numbers, and even social security numbers were very common among the top campaigns. In addition, we observed the collection of identity photos and identity documents, which even have a user-friendly flow and demonstration so that victims know exactly how they should upload uh, their identities, which is very terrifying. To more easily convince victims, these phishing websites offer automatic translation so that depending on your browser settings or your IP address, you will be shown the phishing website in your local language. The victim provides all of the information requested by the phishing website. He or she might be shown a reassuring message such as this. Typically, the victim will also be redirected back to the legitimate website. In the Golden Hour dataset, we found that these users were over 10 times more likely to suffer a fraudulent transaction. The Golden Hour framework has enabled us to take an end-to-end -end look at large-scale phishing attacks, with the key takeaway being that the ecosystem should prioritize mitigating sophisticated phishing attacks, which seem to be responsible for a substantial proportion of damage. The Golden Hour system has been deployed at a major organization and is currently being used to secure user accounts and proactively discover new phishing URLs. In addition, it has been very helpful in tracking COVID-19 related phishing campaigns, which surged earlier this year. In future work, we believe that an approach similar to this can be used as part of a collaborative cross-organizational framework, which might include additional data or the incorporation of signals beyond web requests, which can of course be evaded by attackers. Thank you very much for listening, and please feel free to send me an email with any questions.